It's already broke. You can't break it. This went to hell in a handbasket in a matter of seconds. <laughs> All right, welcome back. The partiest of the party people. Today we've got a problem. We need to try to solve it. And I'm gonna be honest with you. I know very little about these electronic toothbrushes, but this one does not work. If you hit the power button, you can see it's supposed to vibrate the brush head. I don't have the brush head on it right at the moment, but there's literally no vibration here. So I'm going to go into this thing blind. I know I'm gonna give a lot of people some anxiety because they're probably shouting at me and saying, you dummy, why don't you go look on YouTube and figure out how to fix this? Well, and that would uh, completely nullify the fun. So I'm gonna try to use the knowledge I have of packaging of consumer products, which is slim to none, and uh, my electronics knowledge to try to figure out what's going on with this thing and see if we can actually fix it. Uh, this is a Philips Sonicare see it for the glare there uh, and it has a very high frequency it has a very high frequency vibration that vibrates the toothbrush head and uh, well let's let's get started let's uh, let's see how we can actually try to break into this thing first of all all right so Philips Sonicare toothbrush it's got a couple of different modes here a clean a sensitive and a massage mode and I'm just gonna throw it on clean. Wow, we've got a battery already. It says it's full battery, but it stopped working. There's a Go Care and a Max Care. I don't know what that means. Anyhow, I got it on clean. All right, so what do I notice about this thing? Well, the first thing I notice is it's a little bit, it's got a little bit of gunk up here under, under the top. Let me try to pick that off. I'm going to be real careful because this is a rubber seal up here. And I don't want to penetrate that. It looks like something's already kind of eat through it semi, maybe. It's interesting. It's like some... Uh, just some crud build up in there. Anyhow, so uh, like I said, I didn't know, I don't know much about these uh, these vibration motors, but um, I do know two different types. One is a little uh, piezoelectric transducer, which basically takes uh, you know a, a DC current and uh, turns it into a kind of a vibration. One is through a electric motor with a weight attached to one side. So imagine this is the shaft of the motor and you would attach a weight perhaps maybe to one side of it and that wobble of the, on the shaft would actually make the, uh, the motor vibrate. And if that's attached inside this housing, then, then this, uh, this shaft here would vibrate. Video game controllers, uh, they use uh, a similar type of vibration technique. Um, a lot of medical devices use that. Um, old pagers, which they might use a different method in cell phones these days, but it could be a, a, a microelectric uh, DC motor in there with an with a unbalanced weight on it. But those are a few things I know um, that I've had personal experience with. So it'll be interesting to see what this one actually is. So. First, we've got to figure out how to get this thing apart. And the one thing I noticed is that it does charge on this base down here. So the base has a post and it just sits on the post and that's what charges the battery. And this thing is completely dead now. I can't get anything out of it, but it shows that the battery is, uh, is working here. So I did notice the slots in the bottom of the base down here. And that may be some way to to try to grab this base. It looks like this is all sealed and there's a rubber. If you look up here on the top, there's a rubber seal. So I'm not sure how to get this base out. So I don't think it threads in. Um, just looking at it, I don't wanna break the seal on the top. It looks like we may be able to push, push the top out from the bottom or somehow there's kind of hard plastic down here on the bottom. So I'm not exactly sure how to do this. I wanna see 
there's this uh, rubber plastic, there's a plastic grommet on the top of the shaft here. I think that's just to keep the toothbrush head uh, in contact with the shaft. Um, I wanna see if that slips off and that way maybe we can apply some force up here and try to push this thing out. So let me grab, I'm gonna see what we have in our toolbox over here. A little small rubber strap and some vice grips. Let's see if this will work. It is keyed, so it looks like it doesn't, you won't be able to spin it off, but you might be able to slip it off. Um, but I want to slip it off without messing it up too. So let's see if we can get it. So I'm getting some good grip around it. I don't want to break it. That's a little bit more force than I want. Um, let's see if we can get a pry up underneath it. I'm just going to try to lightly pry it with this little car tool here. Oh, yep, there we go. So, so that just pops off. We're going to put that to the side here and, uh, so now we can see the rubber seal a little bit better. And uh, it's definitely got some buildup around it. We've got some free play here. It's still not working. And I don't want to... Okay, so it looks like the seal will slide up over the shaft here. So I'm guessing it'll slide down as well. Let me get a flathead screwdriver. I'm going to try to see if just uh, twisting that will do anything. It's maybe too big. Yeah. All right, so normally I would wrap some tape, um, some of that uh, feathered electrical tape around this, but if I put this in the end, you can see it twists actually. So there's a little bit of play in there and I just twisted it a little bit and it seems like it wants to come out. And there's a little rubber o-ring down there there we go oh yeah and it slides out as one piece so there's your casing um, we've got a rubber seal at the top to keep the water from penetrating through the top near the shaft but you can tell it hasn't worked 100 percent because it's definitely got some crud build up here um, and we have this rubber o-ring at the bottom that keeps water from penetrating through the bottom So our battery is a standard lithium ion cell here Let's see if we can see here. Sanyo Part number 4235010185531. So it's a standard Lithium cell there So yeah, the base just pops out. So it looks like there's two Two little clips on each side there holding it in. I don't know if I want to muck around with that. Yeah, so. So there's two clips on the side and one here on the back. And this is what holds the, uh, this is what holds the, uh, All right, so now I see better how this works. So there's some little indentations inside there. And these clips actually clip into those indentations. 
But I was able to wiggle it free enough without breaking anything, fortunately, it looks like. So probably the best would have been to maybe kind of tap it from the top, but that seemed to work, it seemed to be loose enough. Here you can see your charging circuitry where it sits on the base here and uh, just a coil wrap there to uh, your battery terminals. All right, so I'm gonna put this back on because I don't necessarily, let's see if we can remember how to do this. Those two go on the side. Yeah, just like that. So I'm gonna leave that on there for now because I'm not sure So we've got these magnets. And there's our circuit board. How does this piece come out? So we've got this metal attachment here to this plastic piece, which is housing the circuit board and it looks It's on a spring there, so. Interesting. Gotta be careful with it. I don't wanna break off these uh, little wires here. I don't see many screws. There's a screw there at the top. All right, so now we can see we can we can pull the the, the rubber seal off. We'll leave that over there, and let's see. All right, we got some kind of magnetic. Thing going on there. All right, there's a screw there. Let me see if I have a screwdriver that'll fit that. in really tight still trying to figure out there's our switch for clean sensitive here's our own off switch oh it's working now You can hear it. All right, which mode is the, gonna give me the most vibration? I guess clean, what does massage do? Yeah, it's, it's just not doing much. All right, let's see. This piece looks, yeah, it's on a spring there. Definitely don't want to break that off. This is the head. Let's see what this screw does in the head here. Try to remember how this goes. All right, so this little wedge came out. Rounded on one side. Is that the weight? Interesting. So there's the wedge. And I believe so it's flat on one side and round on the other side. And it can only go in this way.
And that's trapped in there. Scratching me head. Starting to see how this thing works. I'm guessing that magnet. I want to try to get inside here. I know that screw does not go all the way through. This metal structure here, it's got little welds on it. I don't think we can open that. Yeah, it's got some, it's got one, two, three, four, five spot welds on each side. Hey, let's see, what is, what are we doing here? That's interesting, that just twisted right around. I wonder if that unlocks something. Or is it just a... Is there a hidden screw in there? I don't see one. All right, so I went and got the charger. It doesn't look like I'm gonna be able to, to separate this unless I unsolder it. I'm not even sure if there's anything wrong down here. Definitely. Magnetic operation. That creates the vibration, but I'd like to be able to see inside here. It is what it is. So this is a charger. Let's see. Keep all hands free and clear. I don't suggest you do this at home, folks. We're going to put some power to it. So we can see the charge light. So everything in the bottom seems to be working fine. Let me pull this over. So you can see the charge light working there. Let's rule this battery out before we go any further. I'm gonna, um, let me see what the, uh, let me just look this up real quick on my phone here. Snap photo. All right, I'm gonna put this back on the charger. Yeah, that's the front. Three point seven volt. 840 milliamp hours. It says the battery's full. I do want to get my meter and just check the battery. All right, so we know the battery's got good voltage. Um, they actually got some pads right here on top of the circuit board. So we've got a ground here. We've got a two voltage references here. 3.8 there, 3.8 there, and we've got a TX and RX. We've got 3.8 between those. And then, I don't know what that says. Let me see. Do I have my magnifier on? You ain't got work today? What happened? Thought you had work. Uh. 
Can you do me a favor? Can you try to read this? Why is my phone so... What the hell? Why is it so blurry? There we go. What does that say? Grounds? G-N-D-S. Mm -hmm. Alright, let's see if I can get this on video. Alright, so there's the pads, the test pads there. So we got transmit, receive, VDD, VPP, ground to S, and ground. So, alright. So we know the battery's good, right? So something up here in the this metal piece here is uh, it's just not vibrate. It's got some magnets in there. I think they try to change the poles and it's supposed to vibrate. Even when your fingers on it, it's supposed to vibrate. Because you got the brush head that goes over it. So something up here is broke. In this section here. So I've got to figure out what that is. And it's welded together. I see it right there. It's got like five spot welds on both sides. And like they say, it's already broke. You can't break it. So we are going to see if we can't drill all these spot wheels off and open up this uh, open up the metal structure here so I've got my Dremel and uh, that's plastic uh, I only have plastic blades I don't know if that's gonna be enough or not that's that's not good well, let's just try the plastic one. Hmm. Hmm, we made a little bit of something. Let's try this side. I'm just on a real low speed. Mm. I might just be polishing it. I see some sparks. That's good. Now we need to pry. All right, note to self, don't touch stuff that might be hot after you dicked around with it. We'll... Oh, yeah, we did, there we go. Got that one open. Yes, so it did. Yeah, I got them. So it looks like... So that piece pops open. Still got this piece down here at the end. I don't know how it's... Alright, let, uh, let me see if I can get this screw out here. This one on top this one so I think I might be able to take this whole metal plate off if I can get that out I don't know if I have the right screwdriver with me so this needs a new battery turn this one off Alright, so I'm back and I had to use a good old scrape screwdriver to actually fit a screw and remove it. So I finally got the screw removed. I don't think we need the Dremel anymore. I just don't want to lose that screw. So yeah, it looks like I already have.
Jesus. Oh, there it is. Yeah, so when you're working around magnets like that, <laughs> the screw got stuck. So I'm going to put this screw over here, over here. Everything works still like it did before. So now that we've got the casing opened. Uh, there, uh oh. I had no idea how that went in. All right. All right, party people, let me see if I can explain this because this went to hell in a handbasket in a matter of seconds. Uh, as soon as I did a battery change on the camera, I was like, well, you know what, I'm just gonna pop this head off, this piece, and uh, get it from behind its capture. So this metal piece here actually goes over top, and this is the piece we unwelded. Well, inside of that is this plastic piece here, which captures the shaft and this piece I'll show you, which is supposed to be the shaft, but as you can see, it is broke right at the weak point, right by that screw hole. So this is supposed to be one piece, and the uh, this is magnetized and as this gets energized this magnet here will vibrate and I can show you that let's see let's turn on see nothing's really happening until you get this magnet close and you can feel it vibrate you can hear that you hear that so that all of that part is working fine the problem is our shaft broke. Make sure I turn that off. So this is our shaft, and so it broke in half. So this vibrating motion that is created by this magnet system here gets transmitted through the shaft and then up into the actual head of the uh, toothbrush. The problem is, is we have two brakes. So we have a brake here on the shaft and believe me, this thing is, there's these uh, angular pieces here that fit in this shaft in order to get the screw, um, the capture screw that captures that uh, shaft down. And there's another broken piece here. So on the head of this brush, this metal here has a nut in, in it and it has broken off and I could probably JB weld or glue that back together good enough. I don't know if you can see that. So this piece is broken. So that's the nut for the capture to the head here. So basically that would be our finished product if we could actually put the, the bolts and nuts and this would be one entire shaft here. that would uh, transmit the pulse into the uh, the toothbrush head if it was actually on the shaft. So we are stuck unless we can find this particular part here, which is the shaft. And it, the shaft will actually come out with this screw. So this the shaft piece, if you can find just the shaft here, you could actually fix this. So I'm gonna try to look for that shaft and see if it's worthy um, to mess with, uh, to, to purchase and uh, fix this up. If not, you know, if you have access to these parts at home, then that's something you wanna check on. Make sure the shaft is not broke and then also check the capture piece on the head here that has the nut in it it seems to be a soft spot not that one this one and you can see the nuts still in there but uh, I'm sure after the shaft breaks then 
So this piece here too. So those two things, and you could potentially fix this, maybe. Um, there's a lot of vibration, so yeah, that's that's a that's a maybe. But if you had an extra one of these pieces and an extra shaft here, then this thing would be fixable. But uh, all right, so I have the uh, the parts here bagged up. So these are the two parts I actually need. So I need this shaft here um, because the nut retainer there is kind of broke off of the uh, the end there, and then this shaft here, which connects the magnet and the brush head. So basically, this head screws on to one end, and then the magnet part attaches here, and that's what vibrates the shaft up and down. So um, I don't know if we can find these parts or not, so I'm going to go try to look for this particular part here, which is the shaft. And it looks like yeah, it looks like you could just remove the magnet there. So um, I just really need, we need the brush head and uh, we need this shaft here. The magnet can be removed with that screw. So really all I'm looking at is this little uh, metal shaft here. And then I would need this head piece here. So let's go see if we can find some parts um, and just see if they're reasonable as far as cost and uh, how much it would be to, to actually ship this. I, I don't have a spare toothbrush to get parts from, so that's going to be the determining factor there. All right, guys, I'm up on the eBay. Let's see what shows up for Phillips. And yeah, if I can type Phillips Sonicare. My mic's right in front of my keyboard right now. Parts. Let's see. So they've got all the seals, and there's a head right there. Looks like the head is an easy part to find. All right, so that's where one end of that uh, little tent metal shaft connects to. And let's see what we're talking about with price here. We can, you know, anywhere between ten to twelve bucks, and. Um, Free shipping, so that's not too bad. Let's see. What I'm not finding is that little that shaft that broke the little metal shaft that's in the shape of the V. Don't see that on here at all. It's like they have the head on Amazon as well. Much more expensive here. $22.97. Yeah, so not coming up with anything. Um, I could potentially make that part, but that's probably a little bit more effort than I want to put into it. Um, yeah, so that looks like that's going to be going to be the crux of actually trying to fix this toothbrush is finding that part. You can get the whole complete module for seventeen. That's interesting. That's the complete part. HX93 series. Um, there's a main board replacement. I don't need that. That works fine. Now you can find the motors pretty cheap. So it's possible. There's a battery. Just buy the whole motor and just. Uh, Just solder the wires on. Let me double check the model number. All right, so it's an HX6930. There's a couple of good used parts there. Um, yeah, there's a few products. I don't know, with shipping and buying that I don't know if it's worth that getting the whole I was hoping I could just find that shaft yeah you know, it would just have to um so it looks like you know probably 
12 bucks and another five or six in shipping you could probably uh get a replacement uh so we may end up doing that i'll have to talk with you money and see what she wants to do i think she's already purchased another toothbrush now she might like that one better and it may not be worth sinking another you know, 20 bucks into it all right party people welcome back so um it's been a few days since we've worked on our toothbrush project here and i've had a chance to talk to g money and uh, you guys saw us go through the parts so really what i needed was this head piece here because the attachment point for this little uh, metal shaft here um, broke off so the attachment point here for the actual shaft so this should be one piece here and it broke kind of right there where that uh, screw hole is um, or the thinnest part of the metal is actually it and when it breaks what happens is is this part of the magnet just that those two magnets attract each other there and uh, without any space between these uh, the electromagnet and this magnet here uh, there's no really no way for this thing to vibrate and then obviously this piece was broke and then I don't know which piece broke first but the other end of this shaft actually attaches so the way this attaches is here um, and you can see the little screw hole there so there's a screw that attaches to the head um, through there as such with one of these little screws and one of these little ridge captures here that makes it a flat surface and that's the the, the head shaft so the toothbrush actually fits over that shaft um, so this would all be one piece here in general you're probably talking between 15 and 25 dollars to actually replace this you can find the whole uh, motor units here uh, without the circuit board the control board um, pretty cheap for you know t anywhere between 10 and 15 dollars you can also find the individual circuit board so it's definitely doable to fix this but we're talking with G Money, she's already purchased another toothbrush and it was like $27.99 new. So there's really, there's really no need to really fix this one. So it was great to kind of go through it and kind of figure out what was wrong with it. But uh, it's just uh, no need to really go through fixing this. She's already has a replacement. But what I want to do is actually reclaim this battery here uh, for another use because these are these uh, 3.7 volt lithium cell batteries and I can use these in, in a myriad of projects, including creating my own battery uh, packs, uh, you know, for other electrical devices. So I'm going to try to remove this battery. So we're going to, um, I've got my soldering unit out and uh, we're going to try to go through and just uh, remove this as safe as we can and just reclaim this battery. So. I'm gonna start by just snapping this. There's a protective plastic rubber piece that just clasps around the side of the, the, the management board here. And I'm just gonna unclasp that and it just rests on two of the small posts that exist here and here on the circuit board, if you can see that. So I just removed that. Now, you can also unsnap the bottom here and that will give us access if you try to remove the battery now it's not going to happen because what they do is they actually solder the battery onto the uh, the bms board here or the, the the management board so we've got to find out which two pins to unsolder on this board so i'm just going to poke around it looks like there's a terminal there and it looks like there's one down here so i'm just going to poke around with the multimeter here and see which two we get Three point, somewhere around 3.7 volts DC on and that should give us an idea about where to do that so everything is so small on here so I'm gonna try this this post here and this post here the two biggest two biggest blobs on the circuit board and you can tell I had to Terminal switched around, but uh, it's this post and this one here. So you can see there we get three point about three point eight volts across those two. So find your biggest uh, blobs of solder on the management board here, or the, the BMS board, 
and uh, we're going to unsolder that and then the battery should drop out and then we can reuse this battery so so all right so uh, I ended up losing my microphone that I was wearing because batteries went dead so I am doing a voice over here in the computer room and uh, you can see me here I'm unsoldering or heating the solder to remove the battery on the upper soldering joint at this point and then I move down to the soldering joint on the bottom of the battery and unsolder that joint as well and uh, you kind of want to flick the solder away and apply some pressure down on the battery away from the BMS board and that will help um, remove the battery so you can see here one end of the battery uh, detached on the first try there but I had to go back and actually heat up the soldering joint on the other side once again in order to remove the battery completely so just keep that in mind you may not get it the first time but uh, you don't want to apply a bunch of heat um, all at once so you know watch your temperature on your your soldering iron but uh, you can see here that uh, we got the battery removed and all is well and then I'll take this battery and I'll wrap it in some electrical tape and so kind of secure uh, the the ends of this battery so it doesn't short out on anything and I'll store it all right so I appreciate you joining me on this video um, I know we didn't get to an end goal here, but you know, sometimes you just don't win. So you guys know what to do until next time. Skill up and ride, van up and go. Hey, everybody needs a plan B. Cha-cha for now.